There are a lot of birds, mammals, reptiles, and insects living on the surface of the earth. There are also animals that live underground. Today, our story will be about the quietest, most modest and nondescript creature living in the soil, which has no arms and legs, it's thin like a lace, and every fisherman sees it as the bait for the hook. Earthworms appeared on Earth 500 million years ago and during this time managed to settle all over the planet. Antarctica and the Arctic are the only places they are not to be found. It's just that not a single earthworm can survive under glaciers and in permafrost. In 2019, scientists created the world's first global map of earthworms. It contains data on the diversity and abundance of earthworms from 57 countries. Earthworms are not insects. Look at the pictures and find the main distinguishing features of insects. Firstly, the number of legs. There are always six of them. Secondly, the body of an insect consists of three main parts. The head, the thorax and the abdomen. Thirdly, insects have an exoskeleton instead of a spine. Worms don't have this. Worms don't have bones. They have a flexible body, which is solid muscle. The body is made up of many segments. They look like bent tubes. The worms do not have legs, but each segment has short, elastic bristles that they prop up on when moving in the soil. Now let's take a closer look at the appearance of earthworms. The body of the worm has a reddish-brown color. There is no light underground, which means that bright colors are not needed. A worm has a long body. How long do you think the champion worms measure? 30 centimeters? 60 centimeters? Maybe a meter? No, the length of the longest earthworm is 3 meters. This is the length of a snake, like the black mamba. Such long worms live only in Australia. There is even a monument to a giant earthworm. This is a huge 100-meter structure where you can walk along the worm passages and even inside the worm itself. The body of the earthworm consists of two parts, anterior and posterior. Both parts differ significantly, both in terms of structure and functions. In front is the head and the mouth. This is what the face of an earthworm looks like under a microscope. Worms have cells sensitive to light all over their bodies. It is thanks to them that worms can distinguish between light and dark. They don't have lungs or a nose, but they also breathe, only differently, through their skin. Therefore, the earthworm should not be kept without soil for a long time, because its skin may dry up and the worm will suffocate. Approximately in the middle of the worm, there is a thickening called clitellum. It is responsible for reproduction. First, eggs develop here, and then the worm drops the clitellum into the soil where baby worms begin to develop. Many believe that if you cut an earthworm in half, then both halves will continue to live. But this is a big mistake. If you cut the worm in two, with the clitellum remaining on a segment with a head, then this part will be able to survive and the worm will be able to grow back the lost half. And as for the lost part of the tail, it will immediately die. Worms dig holes in two ways. They can shove the soil with the head and pull up the tail to it. This makes their bodies thicker. Particles of the soil are pushed apart, making it possible for the worm to crawl further. At the same time, the skin secretes mucus, which helps the worm push along easier underground. When the soil is dense, the worm uses another method. It simply swallows pieces of soil, which pass through its system, and the worm gradually progresses onward. Underground burrows of worms are very interesting. Firstly, they have a door, not a real one, but made of blades of grass and leaves. 
Secondly, the worm covers the floor of its burrow with various leaves, stems, withered flowers, shreds of wool, feathers and even pieces of paper. It is not cold at all in such a burrow. By the way, for the winter, worms make similar burrows only deeper down, where the earth does not freeze. Here they hibernate until spring. Many have noticed that sidewalks are strewn with earthworms after rain. Why does this happen? The thing is that underground passages get flooded with rainwater and the worms get wet and uncomfortable in them and most importantly they have nothing to breathe so they are forced to crawl out to the surface so as not to choke. Nobody wants that kind of death. Did you know that earthworms are the unsung heroes of Earth's ecosystems? Firstly, they act as scavengers and cleaners, eating rotting leaves and dead organic matter. After this food passes through the worm's digestive system, the worm secretes coprolites under plant's roots. These coprolites are full of nutrients and bacteria that are favorable for plant growth and development. Secondly, earthworms dig real labyrinths underground and so loosen the soil. Thanks to their underground passages, air and water easily reach plant's roots. So the soil becomes more fertile as if by magic. On such land, grasses and trees grow better. Without worms, plants will grow worse and may even dry up completely. Thirdly, earthworms help the soil absorb water during heavy rains and prevent flooding. It has been proven that in fields with worms, the soil absorbs water up to 10 times better than in fields without worms. We can say that these are real underground plumbers. Earthworms can help restore even damaged soil. Research shows that earthworms can help clean up land contaminated with toxic heavy metals like lead. Charles Darwin, one of the greatest scientists and biologists of his time, came to be fascinated with earthworms at a young age and devoted almost 40 years of his life to studying them. Shortly before the scientist's death, Darwin's long-term work on earthworms appeared, in which he singled them out as some of the most important species on the planet, even more important than dinosaurs and humans. The future of earthworms on Earth is not cloudless. First of all, we're talking about the use of chemical fertilizers, as a result of which the number of worms drops dramatically. Statistically, modern farming methods have killed four out of five worms that once lived in the fields. Farmers around the world are turning green fields into underground deserts. This means low soil fertility and poorer harvest. Today, no one is talking about the decrease in the number of earthworms. It's a shame. We need to promote this awareness. After all, the health of our planet directly depends on them. Even such a cute insect as a bee has got its own holiday and now May the 20th is World Bee Day. On this day, it is customary to talk about the great importance of bees and their contribution to sustainable development. But what about worms? They bring no less and maybe even more benefits than bees. Before nectar and pollen can be collected from flowers, it is necessary for these flowers to grow in the first place. Many people don't like the look of worms. In their opinion, they are nasty, slippery, cold and wet. But how can the worms be blamed for this? Their appearance corresponds to the conditions in which they live. A living being shouldn't be disliked just because its looks are so different from ours. Everyone is keen on big and charismatic animals, like lions, elephants or giraffes. But if earthworms had big eyes, maybe people would love them too. The worms are great, just very modest. They live in the ground and don't bother anyone. Sometimes, when it rains, they come out to say hello. It doesn't matter that the panda looks very cute. More importantly, 
The unprepossessing earthworms do the dirty but crucial work in the soil. If pandas die out, it will be very sad. But what will the world be like if all earthworms die out? Our world will turn into a desert. There will be no plants left, which means there will be less food but more floods. The extinction of these invertebrates could lead to dramatic consequences on the planet. Scientists believe that this is as dangerous as the melting of glaciers. Worms are our underground allies, not enemies. We simply cannot live without them, which means we cannot afford to lose them. If you want to save the planet, then consider that earthworms are far more important than pandas for human survival, because we need a fertile soil to feed the world today and in the future. I hope that you will now treat earthworms with care and respect and maybe you will even become friends. And if you see earthworms on the pavement, use a twig or stick to transfer them to a safe place, in a flower bed, under a tree or in the grass. This way you will contribute to keeping up the worm count on Earth.